So here we have Admiral Nelson made up of a base painting layer that's combined of several different layers uh, on top of an analytic sketch layer and some refined painting on top. And then my speed painting layer is down there too. And now I can just keep on going with refined painting, but I wanted to try something a little different. So between yesterday and those demos, I decided I wanted to look up more reference of Admiral Horatio Nelson here, who's best known for the Battle of Trafalgar. And sure enough, he does only have one arm. And I want to include that, right? Um, and then I started finding watercolors to go along as inspiration with the stained glass as kind of softer edged examples. And I just settled on watercolors of rocks, right? So I pulled lots of references of different sizes, but I like that. And then there's something about these old Navy generals or admirals, they, they feel like, like bits of nature. And so what I decided is I'm going to composite in a pile of rocks. Right. And so I might be informed by some of these. I also love these kind of crazy colors. So often digital painting is not just informed by photography, right? It might be informed by other media like crayon, watercolor, um, folk art, <laughs> signs painted by hand. And it, it's good to bring some of that influence into your work. And so I'm going to do some of that. So one example I did is I pasted in a little reference of some watercolor rocks. And then I made them bigger, which of course softened them way out because it wasn't huge resolution and we're working at large resolution. I'm working at almost 16 by 20 by 350, at least 11 by 14. Then I erased the background. I did this just at the beginning of class before I began recording, but it speeds it up. Um, just to remind you of some of the compositing techniques, which we've only really done with photographs before, they work for paint surfaces too, right? So I softened the edge, I erased it out, I expanded and softened the edge some more to get rid of that kind of watercolor paper texture and cleared that out and feathered it so I got this nice soft edge. Then I started sending it backwards through my painting, bringing it forward and kind of seeing these different examples. But I like the idea of him kind of being made out of rock and on and on and on. And then I started playing with uh, blending changes. So what if I made those rocks a different layer style? You know, having it set on overlay. And then bringing different layers forward and trying different blending modes for those, color dodge. So basically once you've built up, I actually kind of love what those textures look like. Once you've built up your, your painting marks, they're your own marks, your own color choices, your own compositional choices, when you bring in some composited textures, you can think of them as a texture overlay, right? But you can use them in more targeted ways. And I'm thinking at the very least, I can build a hat for him kind of in this compositing digital painting method, combining things I've found with other things. So then I settled on kind of a soft light um, layer style of my base painting layer over the top of the rocks. So the color of my painting kind of affects the rocks. And then I decided to cut it out. Again, do the uh, option and merge visible so that everything merged together on a new layer. And then select it out just the rock shapes from that. And then bring that forward. And then that is where I am, right? So let's kind of diagnose these different steps. See how I got here. This is what I love about digital painting, especially if you build it in layers. 
you can kind of see each thing. So I have a white base layer that's empty. I encourage all of you to have that, just like for digital coloring. I have a base gray layer, which helps with your painting once you've established some tones, so you, you know to go dark enough and light enough on both sides. Um, I have my kind of freehand quick digital sketch. I have my analytic sketch on top of that, which was done by bringing in my photo reference and kind of tracing basic shapes on top of that. Then I have my distorted, you know, stretched out analytic sketch, which kept the likeness, but made it more my kind of style or my approach. Then I have my base color layer on top of that sketch. Then I have some more base color. And then I combined all those base color layers into one and I get this. And then I started with some refined painting on top of that, kind of clean up the head. And I started with the eye and worked out. Notice I don't have any refined painting on the rest of it yet. Then I merged them all together into one. Then I did that again with the rocks. Oh, here's my soft light overlay. So this can be an interesting thing too. At this step, as I'm doing the refined painting, I might realize that I'm being a little timid in my painting. And so I can make a duplicate of my base painting layer, put it on soft light, which deepens all of my contrast and saturation. And then I can use opacity to kind of dial it back. All right, so advantages. To me, this is, is like when I do a painting in gouache, um, which is opaque watercolor and then I spray it with oil, like if I'm going to use oil paint on top of it. And because gouache is kind of chalky, it looks different when it's dry than when it's wet. So if you think of your digital painting as maybe being painted with chalk, what happens if you sprayed it with some water or got it wet? And this is what happens. <laughs> it will deepen the saturation and the contrast. And all it takes is uh, making a, a duplicate of it and then putting it on soft light. And then you can decide how much of that contrast and deepening of the color you think is useful before you do more refined painting on top of that. All right? And then I have my rocks just right on top in these different ways. And I can play with their settings, right? And their transparency. And then I can also do kind of painting right on top of that. Now then I can strip away the layers I don't want. I don't want a gray background. I think I've got enough of a value range now. That I don't need the gray to be there. I don't need my base painting layers that have the, um, the palette in them. I think is right there and there, All right? So those aren't needed. And I can question whether I still want the analytical sketch, right? I definitely don't need multiples of them. But I do have it in the combined base painting layer. So maybe with the most options, I'll just go here and now erase. Actually, I don't even need to erase. I can leave them there until the end. But Yeah, I'll just go ahead and get rid of it. So now I have all these different options to play with. And all of that's just, to me, a way of interrogating what I've done. You know, really kind of testing if what I've done is what I want. with each step and then doing something really crazy to keep yourself interested like put a pile of rocks in front of it right which makes me kind of laugh so now i know that i'm not finished so what can i do well in my research i found out you know that he only had one arm and that he also has this glorious hat right so I know I at least want to make the hat out of rocks. So how could I do that? Well, I could composite it, copy it, paste it in, 
move it on top. This is not high resolution, right? But I just want the shape of it, not the actual pixels. And I can kind of find the tilt and the size that I think makes sense. I can do a rough cutout of the shape. So that's what really matters. Just like in doing creature design or even in compositing our landscapes, it's the shapes that matter more than the individual detail. And this kind of yellowed coloring of this oil, old oil painting is not what I want, right? So it's gonna look pretty silly just as it is. Oh yeah. So what I'm doing is pretty much just like I, I could in a painting, right? If I'm working on like a portrait painting for someone and they see me in progress and they say, oh, I'd love to have my cat in there, <laughs> right? Like I can composite in their cat as my reference and then paint from that. I can work with it. So that's what I mean by find a way to be playful when you're working towards a finish. Don't think you're just now set on a path of digital painting that you can't alter. Okay, so there's things about that I like. Um, remember that you can, in digital painting, this could be true of your own painting or of composited things. You can play with the color. So I'm gonna play with the color balance, get that yellow out of there. Some more of the variations, the highlights. In the shadows, put more cools. You can play with the levels. And then I basically want to repaint it with my colors, right? So I could just go in, like we've done in Illustrator and other programs, kind of take it down a little bit and then build a new layer on top. I can call this my hat painting layer. You can make as many layers as you like. Then use my brush. I have my customized brush, all my settings with the shape dynamics. I can steal colors and I could just start painting right on top, maybe at a higher opacity, right? Because this is like a new base painting layer. I can do it at a larger size, about 70% opacity. I never paint digitally paint with 100% opacity because I want the overlap of the colors to be part of it. Right. So this is one option for how to paint his, his lovely hat. It shows me where the highlights are, just like a photo reference would in the gold, uh, I don't know what you call it, sash around the hat, the gold lining. He has this kind of peacock feather brooch, very decorative. All these little highlights that I can put in, even though they're not at full opacity. It gives me kind of a soft foundation that I can brighten later and put the gray behind it. This is another nice trick of digital painting. I've put those little light marks in. If I wanna paint behind those marks, I can. I just do a layer underneath and then I paint behind, right? Something you can't do in traditional painting. Steal colors from myself. Steal some of these combined colors I get from layering up these different color choices. And I'm building a hat. Notice I'm zoomed out. So I see everything all at once. 
and I'm not, I'm trying very 